Hey, welcome back guys. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about some testing techniques which will really help you in doing test driven development in Laravel. So to make you understand how you should approach your testing, what I have done is created a situation where we have a video model. Okay, a video is basically a YouTube link which a user can upload. And the idea is that once it is uploaded, the video is in an unpublished mode and when the admin publishes it it should be visible so let's quickly look at the models first i have a video model which has a belongs to relation with the user and obviously so my user has a relation where it has many videos and the additional check which i have done here is that it should order by descending on updated at so when whenever i'm loading the videos for a user this sorting order will be taken care of if you look at the database you will see that the video has few basic fields for example it has the reference to the user and hence it's a foreign id then we have url a description then i have a type my plan is that the application can in later stage handle videos from two different places either it can be youtube or it can be vimeo but the default value is youtube then i have a boolean field which is whether you know, the video is published or not and the default value is again zero which means by default everything which is created in the database should be unpublished this is the safest option you should always try to have these things properly done so that even if something goes wrong in your application logic at the mysql level you still have a fallback then we have like count and abuse count my idea is that the video can be liked by different users and if someone feels that this video is offensive they can abuse it okay these two columns are unsigned and the default value is zero i don't see negative values and hence you know these are unsigned and the last thing is i have indexed this table with user id because i feel there will be quite a few instances where i will make queries where user id will be in the where clause and hence it is a performance benefit to index this column user table has no changes this is what we get by default with laravel's clean installation so with this setup done let's look at what we have in our video controller so video controller has one store method and if i open up api.php you will see that right now there is one url which is video slash add okay which calls the store method from the video controller and the name of that route is video add if we go into this controller first i am doing the validation where i want to ensure that the url is a required field and it should be a url it cannot be a random string the description is optional hence i have put it as sometimes and then i have this condition where if i see that the request has description then my description is taking the value coming from the input otherwise it is blank and then finally i am creating the video using the mass assignment uh, video create method url from the post data description based on this logic user id type and is published is hard coded right now and then finally i send a response back with the video which is just created so if you see this is the basic code which we have and we want to cover this using some test and so what i have done is i have create video test and i have five things which i am testing over here to cover the entire aspect of this video controllers store method so let's quickly look at what we have in place the first thing is the happy path which is i need to ensure that it creates a new video right it basically gets the request and it is able to do everything which is you know part of the happy path so that's the first one then i need to confirm that it returns the video in response because because this is an api my front-end application will be relying on you know, getting the object back which was just created so that's the second test then i am confirming that the video which was just created and returned back is an unpublished video then i am confirming that it adds a description if it is sent if not then it won't right and it validates the required fields so these are the five things which i feel is required to capture everything which is going on in this method of the controller so let's look at each test in more details so first thing i have created a random url using faker okay okay before actually we deep dive 
there are few concepts which you need to understand if you are new to testing. The first thing is you need to understand that every test which you execute is going to create its own world. Ideally, every test which you write should not depend on any other test which you have written in your entire test suit. They should be independent. Okay. So with that thing in mind, we have a refresh database trait which ensures that before executing every test, it will recreate the database for you. We will set up our world and then we will do the testing. And once the test is done, it will destroy that database or the entire world which you have created so that the next test which is being executed can do the same thing. And because we wanted some fake data, I have used the with faker trait to, to be able to do this faker URL. Okay, it should be a method actually. Let me do that. So yeah, that's how you know you write your test cases, some things to look for. Now, our first test. So we have a URL which is generated by the faker package and then I make an API call using this dot json method this json method is available as part of the laravel's testing uh, functionalities okay it takes the first argument as the method which we want to send data is it a post request is it a get request or something else the second url here is the url or the route to which we are going to make this json request and the third parameter is the actual post data which we are trying to send so if you see the hint it has three things actually there are other optional things as well but the first one is method the second is uri third is data okay. and fourth one is headers if we want to send anything now because it is a post request we see that we have a url requirement and a description requirement so i add these two values as my post data as the third parameter and then i make that api call and what i'm trying to assert here is that it creates a new video right so i make an assertion that do assert that in the videos table i am able to find one record which has this url which we just got from faker and the description is test right so we are basically asserting that whatever post request was sent was finally converted into a row in the database and that's what this is doing okay if you want to run this particular test what you can do is, uh, this is again my way of doing things. I don't have PHP unit installed globally. So I do something like PHP unit and filter equals, sorry, like this. And it does assert that it is working. Okay, I have a shortcut. If you see PUF, which is alias to PU filter and which PU gives me vendor bin PHP unit. So that's exactly what I get if I do PUF and then the function name. Okay. You can create such URLs because then it will help you a lot. Anyways, so this was our first test case where we were asserting that the video was created. The second thing which we are going to do is we are going to make this request again. Okay. These are the same thing. And then using this assert json method and then the fluent you know uh, json api what we are trying to do is assert certain things which are returned in the json so it's a closure assert json is getting a closure inside that we have assertable json okay this is part of the fluent api which we have and in here first thing which we are doing is we are expecting that the data or the json which is being returned has a key called id and the value for that is one okay the second thing is the url is same which we got or rather which we had sent in the post request and the default type of video is youtube okay and at the end you need to have etc okay so this is important and this closure then basically confirms that my json is of the same type why because we are sending exactly this so if uh, if we run this test again I'll do PUF right now. You can see it is passing. Is the confirmation that what I have written is true. So let's just say I make it Vimeo. Come over here. And as you can see, it gives me an error. It says property type doesn't match the expected value. Failed asserting that two strings are equal. It was expected that I have Vimeo, but it got YouTube. So as you can see, this means our code is correct. Getting back to that. Then the next thing is we need to ensure that the video which we have 
created is unpublished. So we take the same setup, which is we have a URL, we pass that URL to our video ad, and then we are asserting. You might think, how, how do I you know, know what is coming and things? So I'll give you a tip. What you can do is I'm getting the response, right? So you can do something like response.get content and you can die dump this particular thing. And if now I come over here and run this, you can see gives you the JSON which is being returned. I can also make it a little more readable by doing JSON decode true and it will show me an array. And you can see I get these all properties. So this is how we know what is coming back anyways so with this we can again assert something in our json using the fluent api what i am doing i am confirming that the key is published is actually zero so let's run this test again so you can see it it basically passes the value now if we are sending a description i'm also asserting that the description is actually returned back after saving so it's very similar to the is published thing and it's a good strategy to have small tests which are you know, kind of asserting only one thing from you know what you're trying to achieve i could have you know done everything in one test which is you know in here whatever i'm getting in response right i could have checked whether the video is published or not whether the video has the type youtube or not and whether the description is present or not but then what happens is you are doing a lot of things in a single test. So when it fails, you don't know what happened. It will just say it failed in video in res uh, it failed that it returns video in response. I'll tell you, um, you know, what that means. So let's just say I have where okay, is published is zero. Oh, sorry, I'm expecting one, then it will fail. And let's just run the entire test suit. Okay, so what I will do here is PHP artisan test. And now you can see it says that you know it it is failing on it returns video in response, which means now my error message doesn't give me a clear idea of what just happened. What failed? It just says that it is not it fails on the test where it should return a video response so is it the case that i'm not returning a video response that's not the case right our controller is still returning a video response but what has actually happened right now is that if we go down it is failing on line 43 correct and the thing which is missing is that it is not able to assert that zero is identical to one. So it no more gives me a clear understanding from the error that what has failed. And hence, I feel it is important that your tests are written in a way that they test something single in the you know, entire action. And that should be the name of your test case. And hence, I have two different test cases. One is confirming that it is unpublished. And one is confirming that the description is actually sent if it doesn't so which means tomorrow if a developer by mistakes by mistake sorry uh, you know changes this code you know in some refactoring he made the behavior that every video which is created are published by default then what is going to happen is when i run the test case i'll see okay two failed this is interesting and what was the first one Okay, the example test is failing for some reason i'll have to check that why that's, that's happening but the test case where you know we are more interested in is that it returns an unpublished video now you can see the error message immediately gives you a sense of what just happened so if i am re actually refactoring this code and if i run the test case i'll know oh this is wrong so what i have done here is a mistake so i'll have to either confirm that this is the new behavior where we are now saying that yes every video which is being created is published or my refactoring was wrong example test case is failing which is fine i'll just get rid of that example test because that is not part of my code base this example is no more required so description and then this is the last piece where we are ensuring that the validation is working for us because we have tested 
this block of code we have tested some properties like this block whether you know the description is empty or whether i'm sending the desk uh, and i'm getting the description when i send uh, a text as description right so this block is being covered through our test this block is covered through our test this is something which we haven't covered and that's why we have this last test case which says that we are asserting a validation okay the first thing is assert status whenever you get a validation error you get a status code of 422 right so we first assert that the response which we got is of type validation error and then the second part of the assertion is that although i know that it is a validation error i need to ensure that the validation is actually for the url field and that's what i am doing inside the second piece and that's what i feel generally covers my entire test case i could have done a test which you know was the or part of it right so it is if request has description then do this or else this but yeah i mean you can write it down but i felt it was not necessary right now so i have cap uh, not captured it because i'll tell you why let's just go to the migration as you can see this is not a nullable field which means if someone removes it they are going to get an error right and hence i have not covered that in the test case because my migration does have that covered if someone is changing the migration then yes it will be a problem we can ideally write it down but yeah for now i have skipped it i felt that it is not required okay so yeah that's about it that's how you know we have you know covered test cases for this simple method which is persisting data into the database for a video object do let me know your feedback about what you feel about testing and you know, whether this video is helping you in understanding the concepts of testing or not and yeah if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel